What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, May 18th, 2024. That's right. It's another weekend. Hopefully it's been a great day for you so far. Hopefully you are finding a way to spend the weekend safely. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. And we do briefly touch on a couple climate uh, issues in our daily pandemic updates. Want to stay informed on everything that's going on and be in the know? Subscribe to my channel down below. Like the content you see here today? Give it a thumbs up. Share this with anyone you know. Hit that share button down below. Hey, the more people that hit that like button down below, guess what happens? YouTube shares our content throughout the algorithm more frequently. And of course, leave a comment on anything you see today down below. Today, we do have several news stories that we are going to talk about, including some data from other countries around the world that we have not heard about in some time. Then we are going to take a look at a poll that I did last week. I believe it was on May 12th I took the poll, said I would use it in a future video. Well, now is a good time to show that. And we're going to take a look at a couple things on my website in relation to that poll that are kind of some reminders to you. And we do have some news out of Biobot today. We'll probably get to that before we get to the poll because it's news from Biobot. It's it's pretty significant. You need to know about that. Then we'll take a look at air quality, pollen levels, all of our usual stuff that we look at. Starting off today, H5N1 influenza is being detected in New York City's wild birds. It's not the first time we've seen it in other different animals or species here in the United States. It's happened in wild birds before. It happens, but now it is starting to show up in New York City, and they are finding several different strains of it. So this is something that is rather interesting. And you can see here in the picture, they are showing Canadian geese in Central Park. We have known geese to have H5N1 before. Already, taking a look at some data from somewhere else in the world. Taking a look at Western Australia. And this is coming from Professor Adrian Esterman, who posted this. And it says, COVID-19 cases also rising rapidly in Western Australia with 1N, 11.5% PCR test positivity rate. So the pe test positivity rate, it is really starting to rise. It was as low as uh, 6%, and now you can see it has gone up to 11.5%. Then we go on to this, and this is not good. COVID in aged care continues to grow at an astonishing rate in Australia. We are at 80-plus week high there. Not good. And here's the takeaway. One dead resident every four hours from COVID in the last week in aged care homes. So that is not good to see whatsoever. And now we move on to this. Singapore now is reporting an increase in COVID cases. New COVID-19 wave in Singapore. Minister advises wearing of masks, you know, these N95s. You got to do KN95 or N95 or better these days. No baggy blue surgical mask and please no cloth mask. Wearing of mask after 25,900 cases recorded in one week. So they are starting to see a rise in cases in Singapore. All right, moving on now. I have said in the past I would like to find more wastewater data from around the world. And one place I did find wastewater data that still exists to my surprise is Canada. Canada still updates wastewater. And it's really interesting here that they still do that because so many places are stripping us of data. But here's the update for Canada's wastewater. Number of sites showing an increase, 17 or 27.42%. Number of sites showing no change, that is 37. And that would represent the vast majority of sites, 59.68. And then a smaller number would be the number that is still decreasing. Number of sites showing a decrease, it's 8. That is 12.90% of the sites. So it is good to see that Canada still updates. Uh, there's just one high site at this time in Canada, 
and moderate. There's 14 moderate sites, and there are eight low sites, and then it says 39 new sites. I don't know if that's kind of like here in the United States where it's a CDC, and a site that hasn't shown up in a while is now listed as a new site. I honestly don't have the answer for that, but if you take a look down here, you can see they have charts, and it's relatively similar to what Biobot does, or uh, should I say what Biobot used to do. We'll get to that in just one second, but you can see here, like for example, Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. Okay, there is a rise there, but then you go to other sites, and you can see some sites are dropping at this time, and it, it's relatively interesting to look that, hey, they are still reporting on COVID in Canada, at least in wastewater, and as of right now, the vast majority of the sites are not seeing a change. While there are some sites that are starting to change, but I don't think it's uh, like what's going on here in the United States just yet where we are. Unfortunately, we are seeing a rise, or a slight rise, in the United States. All right, this takes us into our next bit of news. Some big sweeping changes coming to Biobot. You know how I just showed you these lovely charts here on the Canadian site. Let's go back to that. You know, these lovely charts like this. Unfortunately, you're not going to have that at Biobot anymore. Biobot is going to be ending that because, you know, they're, it's like everything else, we're just slowly losing data. They're going to be doing weekly reports that are going to have some insight and, I guess, data of some sort with some charts. But what you're not going to see on Biobot anymore is those individual county charts, the public data that you could look at and use to make a risk assessment. You know, if you had to go to a doctor's appointment, a dental appointment, or maybe you want to do an outdoor function or something, those individual county by county risk charts are not going to be available on Biobot anymore. It says here, the future of Biobot's public data with the abundance of publicly available wastewater data and our shift to contextualized respiratory risk reports we are sunsetting our public data visualization platform biobot.io-data in other words everything i just said yeah it's sunsetting where else have we heard that word sunsetting cdc cdc has constantly taken data away as well and this is problematic. Like I said, you're not going to be able to make your risk assessments as easy. Yes, you can use wastewater scan, but as we all know with wastewater scan, they don't have sites in every county of the country. Some states only have just one site on wastewater scan, and I believe there are still some states that have nothing on wastewater scan. So, yes, unfortunately, this is a big glancing blow. We are losing Biobot's individual um, county data charts that a lot of people used. All right, moving on now to a poll that I conducted about a week ago, and it states, are you or someone you know constantly getting sick since having COVID? Some answers and comments may be used in an upcoming video, and I can just tell you that the um, overall comments, there are a lot of them, I went through them, and there seems to be a general theme, which we'll get to in just a second. Yes, 74.7%. No, 25.3% out of 533 votes. And that's the vast majority have said yes. I mean, there were 25% that said no. But the general theme, if you read the comments, and it's something that I see a lot. A lot of people know someone who's constantly getting sick, and they're not putting the link or the relation to, oh, it's because you had COVID. Most people do not want to think that. They just want to say, oh, COVID's mild now. It's no big deal. It's not really causing much in the way of problems. No, it is causing problems and has been causing long-term problems since the start of COVID back in 2020. Let's head over to my site now. We actually did a little search. You can actually go into the search bar and let's just type in COVID immune system and watch this. You get search results. It's so simple. Anything that's on the site, if you're maybe trying to find something, you can see if I have it archived on there, you can go up to the search bar and you will get results. And you can see here, we got a whole seven different results. Within those results, we got two different interesting studies. One that says immune systems are seriously weakened by COVID. And then you come down here and it says COVID seems to make distinct 
changes to the immune system, and on and on it goes. So we know that COVID can change the immune system, and it can cause distinct changes, and like this one right here. Long COVID seems to make distinct changes to the immune system. If you have long COVID, there is potential that your immune system can be damaged, and you can get sick again and again. So it is not a good thing to uh, catch COVID. You want to avoid catching COVID at all costs possible, and we know. I'm going to say it again, COVID, long COVID, which is something that's caused by COVID. It started before the vaccine ever even came out. There were people that were constantly getting sick before the start of vaccinations. Want to search something you're trying to find out? My website is datareport.info. I am constantly adding things. As you can see today, I have posted several different things. And uh, my moderator site, Steve, who's post fantastic stuff he actually posted today as well i see he just posted something i'll have to check that out after today's video all right moving on now we need to take a look at pollen levels 29 percent of the united states is in medium so that is for pollen we do see some reds in the plains and the great lakes and upstate extreme upstate new york and northwest vermont like burlington you're in the red today for pollen taking a look at air quality values across the united states as this refreshes and wow yes there is quite a bit of yellow even some oranges back into the great lakes a mixture of yellow and greens into the southeast more yellows than greens in the southeast even some oranges in south florida and portions of texas and look at this wow air quality values they are not doing well in my neck of the woods today in philadelphia interesting I'm going to have to find out what that's all about because just southwest of Philadelphia, there's actually some steady rain ongoing right now. Not good to see bad air quality values when it's raining. Rain usually cleanses the atmosphere. Let's go out and check the West Coast, which I do believe it's just the normal hot spots in the West Coast if it does uh, come up here. California is seeing its normal spots in Central California and Southern California with some elevated and even some moderate to high areas of bad air quality. All right, taking a look at the uh, severe storm threats for the next day because, hey, this can threat your, threaten your life as well. We did see some deadly storms in Houston, Texas the other day. There's a slight risk of severe weather across portions of Wisconsin and western Michigan and a slight risk across portions of southern Georgia and northern Florida for today. And if you take a look down here, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, even Thursday of next week, there are threats of severe weather, and you need to be prepared for this, especially if you live in Kansas tomorrow. And then if we go to uh, Monday, there's a slight risk of severe weather across portions of Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska, and northwest Missouri. And then there's an even bigger threat, which is an enhanced risk of severe weather on the Tuesday time frame across portions of Iowa, Illinois, and Missouri. If you want to learn more about climate and weather, I do have another place that I talk about that, and that is over on Twitter. At Climate Data Report is the spot for that. Taking a look now at what is going on with EMS calls in Philadelphia yesterday, 825 EMS incidents were reported on Friday. That is over 800. It is higher than what we have been seeing most of this week. It is not a good thing to see. Taking a live look at what is ongoing in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania right now, we see 13 calls, but we do see not one, not two, but three respiratory emergency calls, multiple subject and pain calls, and a scattering of other calls at this time. A live look at what's going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and we do see sick person respiratory emergency, another respiratory emergency, and quite a few EMS standbys at this time, and a few other calls. Walgreens this week, the positivity rate for COVID was 15.3%. That was up 1.4%. Testing, unfortunately, did go down. Not going to take a look at any wastewater sites today. We'll take a look at some U.S. wastewater sites tomorrow where we do our wastewater bonanza like we have been doing on Sundays. Taking a look at some CDC data that updated yesterday, if you did not see yesterday's video, we showed you here that epidemic status for COVID is growing once again in Florida. It's likely growing in New Jersey, Washington, D.C., Minnesota, Texas, Hawaii, Alaska, Arizona, Nevada, California, Oregon, and in Washington. And it is still likely declining or declining in some states, like, for example, Alabama, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Indiana, it's declining, likely declining in Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Iowa, 
Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and Virginia, and then it's stable or uncertain in quite a few states at this time as well. And, of course, there are some states that are not estimated because they are not reporting enough data. Drum roll, please. Let's see if we get any update out of New Jersey today. Okay, to my surprise, 70 out of 70 hospitals reported on Saturday. Mind you, last weekend, we were not getting updates out of New Jersey. This is relatively interesting to see. So let's take a zoom in here, and we can see with 70 out of 70 hospitals reporting, and I'm assuming they update these other days to show all 70. I, I don't know. But uh, when we take a look at that, we can see here that that does um, show that there has been an increase. So 177 hospitalizations, 9 people on a ventilator, 24 people in the ICU, and discharges at this time is at 22. And I thought I would show you this real quickly. This is rather interesting. These are the number of people vaccinated in New Jersey. 12,136,436 people had the Pfizer vaccine. Just only 2,369 in New Jersey got a Novavax shot. Moderna makes up 7,692,231 people. And Johnson & Johnson, which you don't hear about anymore, 600,447 people took that vaccine. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update. I hope you enjoyed everything that you saw today. I hope it was educational to you. If you learned anything and you're new to the channel, subscribe down below just want to stay informed subscribe down below of course if you like this video give it a thumbs up the more thumbs up we get the more it helps push this out throughout the youtube algorithm let's try for 100 to 125 thumbs up today leave a comment hey that also helps push things out through the algorithm as well if you have anything to say leave it down below i do enjoy reading all of your comments and of course share these videos with anyone you know Head over to the website if you're looking for something, datareport.info. Follow me on Twitter for my COVID account. It is COVID Data Report. And on Blue Sky, it is at Data Report, where you can find out all the stuff that I tweet out. Usually the majority of the news stories that you do see here each day or studies or whatever, I do tweet those things out. All right, I will see you all again next time, which will be tomorrow. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Saturday afternoon. Thanks for watching.